Hey there, casters and reloaders. James here. Hey, I got me a a new mold. It's the Lee 309 230. And I casted up a few. I, I kind of hesitated to ever get this mold because people had, different people said they had problems with it. It has this boat tail on the back and a lot of times people complain that this area in here, right in here, wasn't up up to size. They, they said it was undersize. And some people said the boat tail was causing problems. But anyway, I was watching uh, 243 Outdoors. He he's doing some videos now on the on this particular bullet, and he's getting some good results. But I uh, contacted him on, in the comments section, and he said he was getting 309 in that section I was just talking about 3095. So I went ahead and I ordered the mold because Midway had them on sale for $28.99 with free shipping. So I went ahead and got one and did a little casting today and mine's doing the same thing. It's I'm getting 309 all through there. So I kind of expect these to uh, shoot good. I had a little problems casting and you can see I got a little bit of frosting there. I must have been a little bit too hot because they're kind of frosted over a little bit which doesn't really hurt anything but I think I uh, the next time I cast some I gotta turn the temperature down a little bit and maybe pour it a little faster but I'll get the hang of it anyway the the main reason I wanted the mold is I had I, I started getting into this zinc thing and I found out by doing a little testing that my gun will take this bullet and that's that seated way out at magazine length. This one's at 2.245 but I, I tested one that was 2.260 and uh, it fed through my gun. And I don't really shoot any subsonics but like I say, I was getting into the zinc stuff. And what I did was I took a, a zinc bullet and a, this is the zinc here and this is the lead bullet here. And I took my cutoff wheel on my Dremel tool and I cut off the boat tail. And I wanted to see what I got for weight there. The lead bullet you take the boat tail off of there, or the letter, there. If you take the boat tail off of it, it's 199.5 grains. That's what I got on this one. So I might as well say 200 grain bullet. And with the zinc, it's 119.8. So you might as well say 120 grain. So what I'm kind of thinking on doing is, I, don't, I uh, on one of my other videos I did it with a, uh, I, I ground the, well I machined off the, uh, on that, on this particular mold it was a 312, 155 grain Lee. And I machined off the gas check and I came out to be a 137 grain flat base bullet. And, it shoots awesome and it's pretty much my go-to supersonic bullet for the 300 blackout but anyway I thought about doing the same thing with this mold since it's only a $28 mold and I've had people in my comments section that ask me once I start doing the zinc that will it hurt the aluminum molds and I can't really say 100% because I haven't casted that many so far I haven't hurt any molds but I'm planning on running zinc in this uh, 309 230 Lee mold. And what I plan on doing is machining off 
about an eighth of an inch off of the top of this one off of this mold to take the boat tail off of it and that'll give me a choice of 120 grain zinc bullet or 200 grain lead bullet so I'm kind of making this a multi-purpose mold and also as a test bed to find out if you can actually do zinc with these aluminum molds without harming them and if so I've got a $28 mold I can do both with so that's my plan the reason I, I'm taking the boat tail off is because this is magazine length and the bottom of the bullet comes right to the where the shoulder meets I don't know if I can show it here on camera but you can see that's about optimum length to get so that what I'm shooting for is a maximum case capacity for powder also because I've already tried the 300 blackout with a zinc bullet basically the this length and they shot wonderful shot great I was cooking them close to 2400 feet per second a couple of them actually went 2400 the rest were 2380 with 115 grain bullet another one I tested was 117 grain bullet so anyway I, they shoot good with in zinc and I get some really good velocity for this bullet so that's why I'm going to, going to do the take the boat tail off of them and I'm going to practice all this with this cheaper mold $28 mold now the last time I machined that six cavity mold I used my router and this homemade jig I made up and a quarter inch carbide cutter well, quarter inch you got to make several passes you know up and down each each pass you make so I got to looking on Amazon and they had this uh, one inch cutter it has three carbide cutters on that's for your your router so that's what I'm going to use this time should make it go a lot faster because I can do each pass you know with just two passes across there because it's one inch instead of a quarter inch you know. so I should be able to go make a pass like that another pass back and reset my depth and keep going until I get the boat tail off at least that's the plan and this this wasn't that expensive it was only a few bucks more than that uh, quarter inch carbide so that's what I have planned. I mean, I, I have this uh, Seiko mold that I bought, and I did a lot of testing with the zinc, and uh, it shoots really good. But it's nice to have options. I figured this way I can, uh, you know, just do a little machining on there, take an eighth of an inch off of here. I'll just take the sprue cutter off machine it put the screw gutter back on and I can test with this aluminum mold and see how well it, this works but this is a really nice bullet as far as speed and function and I, I, you know, I just wanted to try it and see if I take the boat tail off of it make it a 200 grain bullet and lead and 120 grain and zinc so that'll give me more options for shooting 300 blackout with zinc or lead. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you all. I know it's a little crazy and a lot of people wouldn't even think about doing something like this. Start whacking away on a brand new mold, but hey, it gives me something to do. And it, you know, answers a few questions as far as if it's going to shoot better without the Botel. Who knows? I'm kind of thinking it will because the shorter the bullet is the more stable it should be at least that's my thoughts anyway we're gonna find out 
anyway that's all i got thanks for watching